Hey everybody, welcome back to Bravely Default. Last time, we went, through the we went through the Miasma Woods in order to get here to Florum since there was no other way to get here it seemed. And we finally arrived at the town of Florum in the Florum region. So, let's head inside. Is it, uh, is it just me, or are there awfully few men around? Florum is called the Land of Radiant Flowers for a reason. All its residents are female. What? A whole nation of women, you say? And if a man comes here, what do they do to him? You needn't worry. Men cannot take up residence, but no law bars them from visiting. You're red as a beet, Tiz. Are you blushing? Oh no, I just... Hearing it's all ladies here, I just got a little nervous is all. <laughs> That's adorable! Uh, hey, I just didn't know, all right? Don't tease me. Look here, Tiz. My journal describes this place in crisp detail. True to the old teachings, Florum's women live in chaste humility, in coexistence with the spirits of nature. Devout crystallists, they reject war and conflict, instead choosing lives of peaceful reflection. Hear that? A land of maidens, pure and modest, fit to shame the flowers of the field. Angels all. Give or take those two. Feast your eyes! Well, I finally had it dyed! Brightest color I've seen yet! Well, have you seen this? A spirit hairpin! My coin purse is empty, but come on! Worth it! Pure and, well, maybe not so much modest. But surely they seek external beauty to match their... <gasps> Cold! What's wrong? Oh, that's cruel! She's soaking wet! Oh, you'll have to forgive me. I was dazed by your hideous hair, and my hand slipped. <laughs> What in the world? Hmm? That awful cow dropped something. It's a flyer. 47th Annual Sacred Flower Festival, it says. Ah, the yearly competition to decide the most beautiful flower in Florum. Lovely, a beauty contest. Now he'll never shut up. But that isn't right. The Sacred Flower Festival is a day of solemn observance of the Crystallist faith. What's more, this place is different. Its streets were not so overrun with glamour and idle pleasure. I worry for Olivia as well. Let us go to speak with Florum's matriarch at once. One, why wherever we visit, do people just have to be assholes? The people that were starting to assault us, working for the Merchantry and the Anchime, the, the Sky Knights and Count Disla, no, that's just the, the everyone here, it's just a fucking asshole. Read our signature tutorial requests, rename your special move, set special move dialogue, and check combat bonuses. Let's go and take care of those, so if we go into this journal, go to Encyclopedia Combat Bonuses, we can just check all those out. I've already talked about these before. So we'll just not. Oh, that's that's three past data. That's not important. Um, let's have now view enemy info in battle. Didn't we do that already? Why? I mean, we'll do it again. I, I guess. I guess there's a little bit more to it. Before it was just swipe left, and now it's swipe left and actually press a button. 
Uh, so we have to change the name. It will change rejuvenation to... <laughs> rejuvenation... Rejuvenation... Not? <laughs> I'm good at coming up with names. I know that was that. And the comments... Edit that. And then, then, then remove that dot. There we go. There's the comment change and the name changed. Again, these are things I don't get into all that much. Event viewer, um, uh, we, we can do that if we want. We can engage in auto battle, which we'll have to do. So yeah, as I said before, there is an event viewer in the game. You can go here and view anything you want. Movies, um, party chats, we'll, we'll be play. Um, you can view all of that chapter. Uh, we'll, we'll just do this one and then skip it because we don't have to actually rewatch it. <laughs> but we do need to say we did, and it'll trust us. Okay, there's that. And then we have those two, which we'll take care of eventually. Party chat as well. A changed city. Whoa, this place is incredible. Look at how shiny the floors are. I can... Ring a bell, what are you looking at? Oh, uh, various things. I was deep in thought, you see. Then why did I catch you looking at my reflection? It's different. All of this is completely different than the last time I was here. I recall it being a two-tiered city built upon the river's surface, but... Before, the lower tier was residential, while the upper was reserved for chrysalis institutions. What of that giant stage at the top? Did that serve for a religious function? I have no idea, nor could I even guess what sort of place all that neon is advertising. Just what in the world could have happened here? I guess the place has changed a lot in or however long it's been since City is, or Anias has been here. Gift from the Trader, nothing else new, nothing really that close to completion, about a half hour away. Anyway, we do have, of course, some new shops here. We have a weapon shop, which carries scimitars, Valkyrie Halberd, which I do want to get for Ring a Bell, I suppose. Rod of Fire would increase our magic attack by three. Not that great, but. It does make it fire attacks do more damage, which is going to be helpful. 10% more damage. That's actually really good. Uh, we already have that for on yes. Uh, Fancy Dagger. Nah, I'm going to stick with the Valkyrie Halber. That actually even does more damage. And we already have Spike Knuckles for Adia from the, uh, the Dragon. The Cross Shield, which would increase our defense pretty handily, actually. I think I actually am going to buy this because everyone's using those. But let me think about that a little bit before I do that. Um, we have, of course, armor, or like, or helmets, rather. I want to buy this for... Hmm. It's not really actually the helpful raises raises magic attack, naturally. Then why isn't raising Tiz's magic attack? Doesn't make any sense. He doesn't already have that equipped, does he? He has a cat ear hood, which also raises magic attack. Okay, that makes sense, then. That makes sense why it's not having any uh, effect. However, it would raise his defense a little bit, but not as much as that, but at the same time, I don't really need him having defense. Uh, I'll think on that, but I do definitely want to buy... Well, do I, hmm. I guess I'm just too picky, and like, <laughs> like five points in defense growth really isn't enough for me, but it is important. Tell you what, let's buy this for... for a ring a bell. Let's buy... This for Anyas and Tiz. And we'll buy... I guess we can buy this for Ring of as well. Might as well. A lot of defense increase, evasion increase. Very good. Um, Let's go and equip that so we can see, what, again, what uh, kind of updates we're getting. So I'm just going to optimize everything and fix anything that changes. Okay. Well, actually, I should check that I actually equip the right things. Four rope, four rope. Okay, we're good. All right, let's see now. 66, 37. Yeah, I don't think that's really worth it, either for Anias or Tiz. It's just not much of an increase at all. Same with this, only three points, five points for Tiz, but lower magic attacks, so I don't really want that. Uh, yeah, I think I'm just gonna stick with these uh, round shields, because they give a good increase, as well as increase our evasion even more. And, um... Any of these I want to buy. Not particularly. So, yeah. Not a big change to our armor here, but... Oh, you're not actually using a shield. Whatever, we have an extra shield. I'll keep it around. We might use it at some point, so... Not a big problem. 
uh, sell these tabby suits. Actually, I might have wanted to keep them for Pusic Poison Mutant, but I probably would never have thought about it anyway, so whatever. Not actually that big of a deal. Um, yeah, I don't think there's anything else that I want to buy. This would, this would actually increase the Dia's armor quite a bit. So actually, well, we also have to completely destroy her evasion. I just bought her that. So, actually, never mind that. You did equip that, right? Yes, you did. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I get paranoid when I see big numbers. Um, this... Hmm. I mean, it's not that like this wouldn't be beneficial, but I just don't think it's really worth it. I think I'd rather stick with my money. However, weapons, we still have to buy those. Buy the Valkyrie Halber for Ringabel. Rod of Fire for Tiz would be good. And that's pretty much all we have to buy, really. So go ahead and equip that. Equip that. And we can sell our old stuff as well. No need to hold on to it. Not really going to do us any good. So sell the Mithril Spear. Sell the Mithril Rod. And that should be good. So stuck with 10,000 gold. Eh, not too bad. We, of course, do have an inn here I will sleep at because uh, we are low on health. We do have another trade over here. Who, I think they have the same supply, essentially. Um, prices don't change throughout the game, thankfully. So everything costs the same here as it did in Anshine. The world is a very consistent economy. Uh, but yeah, nothing here I really want to buy. Didn't really use many items in the Miasma Woods. And we have a magic shop as well. So we can buy better things. I definitely want to buy... I actually kind of want to buy all of these. Cura is a better curing spell. Raise, raise, uh... Targets from, or party members from the dead, so we don't have to use as many Phoenix Downs. A Suna cures every stats element. Um... I think I'll hold off on that one, actually, but I definitely want to buy these three black magic spells. And I do want to buy... Haste and Quara. Um... I don't really need Teleport or a Suna, though. I guess I'll buy a Suna. And fuck it, I guess I'll buy Teleport as well. What's the worst that can happen? By not having a little bit more money. I'm just here for the skin. Dress sexy or stop wasting my time. Do you not think Tiz is sexy, sir? Because that's offensive. I've never been getting very confident in my face. Or my body. Or my anything. Aw! I'm sorry! Poor girl. Who I seen my face is pretty? That's something... But that's them telling me everything but my face isn't, right? Wow, that's... No. No, not at all. As your job level rises, modifiers for stats like strength will go up bit by bit as well. Put another way... That means changing in a new job can lead to a temporary dip in your stats. It may be safe for us not to have everyone change jobs at the same time just because you learned a new one. Yeah, that's a good thing to say. You don't want to change everyone's job. Say, like, you really liked Time Mage. You don't want to change everyone to a Time Mage immediately because, one, that's kind of a stupid idea in the first place, but two, they're going to be weaker than they used to be because their stat gains aren't, or their stat uh, benefits from the job aren't going to be as good as the ones they've been leveling before. Of course, if you're using a freelancer, it's not actually that big of a deal. Two tired boys. You said it. Yeesh, what's got you two yawning first thing in the morning? Actually, don't answer that, Ringabel. I can guess. But, Tiz, why are you tired? Isn't it obvious? Those darn neon signs are flickering all night long. Then as soon as I finally get to sleep, Mr. Night Owl here comes stumbling back to the room. And we already know you're a neurotic sleeper. Can we call it a light sleeper? Look, here's some coffee. These are dire times, so I made it black. Thanks, that's great. <laughs> Look at this one. You fell asleep still holding the cup. Don't go drowning into your coffee, ring a bell. Aw, oh, poor Tiz having trouble sleeping. Florum really is an absolutely gorgeous city if we zoom out here. I love the look of it. As corrupt as it seems it may have become, according to Anyas, it really is gorgeous atop this water. I just... Water reflections are like my favorite thing in video games and in real life, and I just love when they're done well, and they're done pretty well here. Yeah, especially since it's in such an isolated space, they can, you know, easily do it well, and I'm glad they did. This this hairpin costs an arm and two legs, but isn't it just amazing? I, I mean, it's alright. It's colorful. Gosh, each girl is cuter than the next. It's a buffet for the eyes. The other day, when Mom wasn't looking, I tried her lipstick. It was super pretty. What are you doing? What is this motion? I... You know what? Whatever. Sorry, but I've got news for girls who just stand there showing off their awful boring color. You're the asshole who spilled water on Anya's. Fuck off. No, no, no. It was a blue-haired girl that did that before. Well, you know Whatever. Still an asshole. The Sacred Flower Festival is finally set to start. I can't wait. Hmm. Yeah, things have uh, definitely changed here. The stage doesn't really seem like it fits any sort of religious purpose. 
There's a Lilith's Kiss down there. Um, I don't actually remember what that does. I believe it just actually casts Charm on uh, every enemy. So, that's cool. Basically, the same thing as Confuse. Hmm. Who might you be, child? I am Agnes Oblige, Vestal of Wind. It has been many years, Lady Matriarch. I see it now. My, but you've grown, dear. Florum is more beautiful for your visit. On the topic of Florum's beauty, Lady Matriarch, just what has happened here? Then you've seen it, have you? Be sister to the flowers, woods, and waters, pure of mind and body. Those were Florum's ways. Emphasis on were, I fear. Now the girls war over who can ornament herself the loudest. They spend their days staring into mirrors while nature's beauty is lost to them. Their neglect has turned Florum's lands to wastes. Her beauty is all but lost. How has this happened? At some point, there emerged the notion that prosperity was limited only to the most beautiful. But you guide this land's laws, Lady Matriarch. Did you notice no change? Not until it was complete, I fear. It truly was an insidious thing. And now, I am left to curse my powerlessness to reverse this corrosive tide. I join you in despair, Lady Matriarch. My pure and... Going to cut you off there, Ringabel. Lady Matriarch, I wish to speak with the Vestal of Water. Is Olivia at the temple? Ah, oh, of course. The two of you were so inseparable as girls. You scarce passed a day apart. Seems almost yesterday that. Fond memories of fairer times. But I fear the Vestal of Water is in hiding. Even I cannot say where she makes her hermitage. No. Then how does the Temple of Water fare? It suffers for the absence of its mistress and her acolytes. These months have seen it go ragged. Agnes, it may still hold some clue. Why don't we begin there? Yes, yes, of course. Well, it is as good a place as any to look for, uh, for Livia. Another party chat though, of course. The Water Vestal and me. It sounds like you and the Vessel of Water were really close. Olivia is my one and only friend. She's very dear to me. We were the same age, and we're selected as Vestalings around the same time. Then we succeeded our predecessors and became full, full Vestals together as well. We were always together, walking the same path and step. I do not know that I could have endured the Vestal training without her. She was always a talented one, smarter than I, but kinder as well. She shone so bright. There was a time we traded letters nearly every day. Despite the distance separating us, she always felt close by. Once we became vessels, our responsibilities kept us from biting as often, but I never imagined anything like this. Don't worry, I'm sure I'll find her. She's probably busy looking for you right now. Yes, of course. And thank you, Tiz. Tiz is very, very good at reassuring people. It's a good character trait of his. Ah, Lady Vestal. That's all you have to say. Okay, sure. Salutations. I mean, yes, it's a very small building. We really don't need you to guide us here. Behind the uh, Matriarch's chair, we can find a Tengu Yon. Which just gives us, um, I think that applies sleep to the entire party. And this over here is a Star Pendant, which gives us immunity to poison. Anything we don't have to buy is helpful. Because we can either sell it, or it's just a free, uh, helpful item to us, like that Star Pendant. Anyway, yeah. Uh, there's not really anything else we can do in Florum, so for now, we already bought all the magic, and we already accepted- well, we didn't sleep at the end, did we? 
No, we did, because we got a part from though. So I suppose we're just gonna leave and go to the Temple of Water. And what better time then to go over the enemies we can find in form. Largely, they are the same as the, um, the Miasm Words. Wow, it wasn't a long trek, we didn't run to a single enemy. Okay, I expected at least run to one. I... Fuck it, let's send to the Temple of Water, it's fine. Everything's fine. A pious life. Not a person in sight. Still, it's a relief to see the temples unharmed. The Temple of Wind was torn apart. I was worried we'd find the same here. Indeed. At the very least, it seems the acolytes escaped harm. Or so I hope. The smell of the air here is so nostalgic. I hear all four temples share a similar design. Perhaps they all feel this way. The construction is plain. Just stone and simple windows. No ornamentation to speak of. But when the sun filters in, the prayer hall was suffused with a calm warmth. I used to love just watching the light pour through the windows. I can imagine how peaceful that would be. I'm certain it seems a dreadfully dull and monotonous life to outsiders. But to me, life in the temple was rich and perfectly tranquil. Tranquility is great, in moderation. But didn't you ever get the urge to know what was going on in the outside world? It is not as if we completely forsook the world around us. The world within the temple is simply enough for us, that's all. Anis really seems to enjoy the life she used to have, and definitely misses it. So, there are plenty of chests in the Temple of Water, as we can see on the bottom screen. However, there are actually no enemies here. None at all. It is a completely peaceful area. One of the first we have encountered that could technically be considered a dungeon. Actually, it is the first. This place is in a grim state. But it feels different from the Temple of Wind somehow. There are no traces of damage from monster or miasma. This is erosion. Time left these scars. <sighs> so no one's been here for quite a while if it's, well, not rotted, but been damaged simply by time. I have to wonder how long it's been abandoned like that then. Hidden wall here, we can find a rebuff locket that gives us immunity to charm, a status that we haven't encountered yet, but uh, one we will have to be looking out for quite soon. Down here as well, a high potion. All the chests in here are very good, they have very very good items, so you definitely want to go around. I mean, there's literally no threat to you, there's no enemies, so you definitely should just grab these items. Nothing. There's no sign of anyone here. The same as the Temple of Wind. No. It looks the same, but it's anything but. What do you mean? It isn't that no one is here. There is no sign of anyone ever having been here. Not in years. So, for years, this place has been abandoned. You have to wonder if maybe the Antichrist was some sort of florum before it was able to spread to Anshine. Ice Charm there increases water resistance. Very helpful, of course. And an Axe Potion. That's the best type of potion we could possibly get, so very glad to be stocking up on those right now. Have a look. These are Vestal Garbs, aren't they? They should be Olivia's. The design is a bit different from yours, Agnes. Not bad, I must say. Must you? Really? Ring a bell, seriously. There are way, way more boring things going on here than Olivia's dress sizes. Like, not, not the thing we're going to be talking about right now. So as you've seen, the design is very, very similar to the Temple of Wind, just... No enemies and no upper floor that we could access because, well, it hasn't been torn apart. Go and save here. Let's progress to the crystal altar. A shield 
already surrounds the crystal. The same as that I placed upon the crystal of wind. Then, does that mean Olivia already awakened this one? But it's so dim. It looks more like the shield was put up to stop the dark from swallowing the crystal entirely. The water vestal is the only one who could have created it. And now, only she can remove it. She must have sensed what was happening sooner than I. She managed this just before the crystal was lost. And then she hid. I can't say what her reasons were, but she handled the situation brilliantly. I'm impressed. There's no risk of the crystal being swallowed up like this, or of any humans meddling with it. The fact that her shield stands is proof Olivia lives, isn't it, Ari? Uh-huh. Wherever she is, she's doing fine. That's an enormous relief. So that means we need to find her if we want to awaken the water crystal, right? That's the best way, certainly, but not the only one. These shields can only be invoked by the Vestals of Fire, Water, Wind, and Earth, and dismissed by the same. But that's not to say that the Water Vestal's shield can only be dismissed by the Water Vestal. You should be able to get past your shield on, yes? And awaken the Water Crystal, too! Is that true? Yes, there are two such cases written of in the Crystalist Scriptures. I think you should do it! Here and now, while we have the chance. The whole world could fall into shadow if we don't hurry. We can search for Olivia as soon as we're done. I cannot. If the water crystal is to be awakened, it ought to be at Olivia's hands. The rite of awakening has been performed only a handful of times in the history of the crystal orthodoxy. It's only right that Olivia be the one to release the prayers of the lineage of Water Vestals. Well, yes, but we don't know where she is. Where do we even start looking? Let us return and speak with the Matriarch again. To be fair, Eri does have a point. Why not just awaken it now and restore the water? I'm fairly certain Olivia wouldn't really mind so long as it's helping the world. Two, the writing in that cutscene, there, was no, there wasn't really a point one, really, really, but we're on point two, trust me. The writing in that cutscene from Eri is kind of weird. At the start, she says herself that the shields on crystals can only be dismissed by the, the water vessel, or the vessel that placed it, and dismissed by the same. Or basically, she says that um, Olivia placed the shield on the crystal, and now she's the only one that can remove it. But later on, she says that, well, that doesn't technically mean that only the water vessel can remove it, but even though that's what she seemed to have said earlier, it seems like she was just kind of talking out of her ass a little bit. Uh, and she didn't really know exactly what anything meant. But, I mean, whatever. Let no believer escape! Show any who struggle no mercy! They found us! It's over! All over! Keep hope alive! We have to make it to safety! Now run! What was our crime? Is a quiet life of piety such a grave offense? We've done no wrong. No wrong at all. Alright, well, we've got a little bit more information on the crystal, at least. Maybe the Matriarch will have some knowledge of the, uh, the Vestal's whereabouts, the Vestal of Water's whereabouts. She said herself before that she didn't really know, but maybe she'll have some clue. Or at least she'll want to be updated that the Vestal of Water is indeed alive. Not just empty, but utterly abandoned, you say? Still... It pains me to say I haven't a clue where the Vestal of Water may be. Indeed, I'd hope that might be something you could tell me on your return from the temple. I am sorry. Then we're at an impasse. What drove her into hiding to begin with? 
Were the Eternian forces after her? If they wanted Agnes, it stands to reason. Hmm. Who was sent here to Florum? The Blood Rose Legion! Do we go pick a fight? I am a wanted criminal, and you a traitor. We could be marching to our own executions. If I may, this seems like a job for my journal, hmm? Let's see what hints it can offer. Hmm? I'm not certain this is terribly relevant, but I found a curious passage. What does it say? Anything could help. Promise you won't get mad. Uh, very well. The Wind Vestal entered the Sacred Flower Festival. And it ends there. What? Wait, what? Give it up, ring a bell. There's no way she's entering some tawdry pageant. Let me see that. Huh. Well, I'll be. It really does say that. <sighs> Agnes? Hello? There's no call to panic here. Just because it says something in Ringabel's book doesn't mean you're forced to play along if you don't. No, I'll do it. What? Are you serious? Really? Though the celebration has changed, the festival remains Florum's most important ritual, does it not? Just so. It was a time of prayer for the year to come, for a bountiful harvest and freedom from illness or harm. One girl was chosen for her purity of heart to serve as flower maiden till the next year's festival. She would join the spirits in nurturing Florum's flowers. It was an honor and a great responsibility. But recent years have seen it become a hollow shell. They compete by skin-deep beauty alone. Yet it still remains an important event, attended by all in Florum. If I enter, Olivia will know I've come to seek her out. Aha! Then we won't have to look for her because she'll find us! It's dangerous. That's a lot of attention you'll be calling to yourself. I understand the risks, but if it means I am able to see Olivia, I will enter. Then, I'll help however I can. I'm not certain a man would get far in the competition, Tiz. I... Uh, didn't say I would enter! This is all so roundabout! Are we really doing this? I still say Awakening the Crystal should come first. Are you listening? Hey! Eri, given the tasks that lie ahead, I think enlisting the aid of the other Vestals must come first. I guess, but still... So, do you have any idea of how the new Sacred Flower Festival even works, Agnes? I do not. Given all the changes here, the mind boggles. Well, we did pick up that flyer. Let's have a look. Oh! -ho. Entrants will flaunt their beauty on the stage for all to see, it says. Beauty contest. Plain and simple, then. From the sound of it, competition will be fierce. I've no need to win. I need only alert Olivia to my presence. But... And I say this with love. You're rather plain, dear. You could get lost in the sea of color. Uh, am I? Then what do you propose? Luckily, the potential here is top-notch. Wouldn't you say it is? Huh? Uh, why are you asking me? <laughs> Look at him blush! You're a gemstone in the rough, Agnes. That's my professional opinion. Then tell me, what must I do? Hmm... I suppose step one is studying up on the trends here in Florum.
so we have a party chat. <laughs> yes! Yes! This is the best one! <laughs> oh my god. Hmm. What's fashionable around here? Fashion. What? Fashionable. You know, fashionable? That's how the hip kids say it back home. Oh, have a look at this! Ta da! An heirloom floor linen stole. That's lovely. And so fashionable. Not fashionable. Fashionable. Fashionable, then? Idia, where did you find it? I'm envious. Aren't you? It was a gift from my mother years and years ago. If you wrap around you like this, it makes for the perfect accent. Absolutely fashionable. You're always fashionable, though, Idia. Not fashionable! Fashionable! <laughs> <laughs> Although you're nearly as fashion-minded as she is, Ringabel. You're always fussing over your hair and your shoes are blinding. What can I say? I live my life in front of the mirror. A proper pompadour is a joy and a responsibility. Shoes and belt much match. But that's only the beginning. You don't know the half of it. Clothing I really like, I never wear. Don't want to get dirty, do I? What use are clothes you can't wear? See, Tiz? You're the only country bumpkin in the group. Give this stole a try. Stoles on guys are in this season. But the season is warm. What's the point of wearing a scarf when it's not cold out? Scarf? It's not a... Here, just try it. At times one must suffer to be fashionable. This has to look ridiculous. Oh well, I'll think of it as a sweat towel. Tiz, you look very... Uh, f fashionable. You look right at home when weeding a garden. Okay. I don't know if that's nice or not, but I love that party chat. It's so funny. All right. Setting up on some trends. The latest thing in Flora? This spirit hairpin I'm wearing. Obviously, it's the must-have item. Want one? Well, too bad. The traders don't stock them. Who does? <laughs> not telling. Why wouldn't you tell? That doesn't... I... You know, whatever. This guy can be looking around asking people. Maybe they'll actually tell us things instead of just saying, Hey, this is great. Fuck you. You can't have it. I hate you. Anyway, let's go tr to the trader and see if they have any answers to that. Here for a spirit hairpin? I'm sorry, but I fear we don't carry them here. There's a specialty merchant who comes into town every so often. Seems they're the only source. Though, if you're hunting trends, all the girls are dyeing their hair these days. Like that girl there. Though, I'm afraid we don't carry dyes either. Really, where do they get all this stuff? To be fair, how many people in a town for women, like only women, that don't seem to go out adventuring much at all? Like... How much need do they really have of, like, potions and ethers and wake-up bells? Like, <laughs> I'm sorry, I just don't really see the need in this, like, chast town where they they just seem to be obsessed with fashion and not, like, adventuring and shit. That doesn't really seem to make any sense. Also, how does the city keep surviving without men? Like, I know they can visit, but, like, y you think you would need some living here in order to, you know, to children? They need to, you know, whatever. Florum's finest food. Oh yes, what is Florum's finest delicacy, food-wise? Let me guess. I would dearly love to escort you, right? Without question. But I'm also just plain hungry, aren't you? Now that you mention it. So, Anyas, yes, any recommendations? Hmm, let me think. Florum is known for stream noodles. Oh, and water jellies for dessert. Those sound lovely, but have you anything that sticks to the ribs a bit more? A bowl of eel wafers, perhaps? Hmm, I believe Queen Perch is in this season. Eel wafers... bowl? What in the world? It is a delicacy made by stacking thin slices of eel from Florum's marshlands. Quite famous. And what's a Queen Perch? A river fish, prized for their aroma. They swim upstream at this time of year, and are ser served salted or fried. I think some fried queen perch sounds good, then. Perhaps I'll try these eel wafers, then. Ooh, me too! Eel wafers, fried perch, and water jellies! <laughs> Heh, 
What, one of everything? Of course, what did you expect from Medea? Uh, this girl's her hide, their hide. Their hide? Fuck it, let's talk, talk to her. Hmm? My hair color? Isn't it just to die for? Uh, that wasn't a pun. <laughs> anyway, Petal Hue, they call it. It's the biggest thing ever. Of course, I discovered it first. Other trends? Like I'm gonna tell you. I'm all the beauty Flora needs, thank you very much. But some of the men here have traveled all over. They may know something new. Ooh, if they do, tell me. Yeah, no, you're you're just rude, and you don't deserve to know any information we find out. So, there's a guy down here. Let's go and talk to him. The latest trend? Who cares? Forget about the newest thing. Show me the sexiest! An enlightened opinion. What a woman needs is boldness. It's settled. We're going sexy. <gasps> that lady there's on the right track. Get her to teach you a thing or two. Another part chat. I want this and that and... Adia, did you take Ring Bell off on another one of your shopping sprees? <laughs> what can I say? I see these clothes and just can't help myself. That's abundantly clear, looking at all the bags in Ring Bell's hands. My poor numb hands. Worth it! I mean, just look at this adorable one piece! But Adia, you already own a dress that's practically identical to that. What? They're totally different! See? The length is shorter on this one. It's all the rage. If you go buying new dresses every time hemlines change, she'll be broke in no time. Yes, and my purse is in no condition to support her little habit. <laughs> Needless to say, mine is no fuller. I haven't got two coins to rub together. <laughs> Don't tell me. Thank you so much, Tiz. Ah, that's my wallet! Jesus Christ. Idea, uh, what the hell? That's just rude. Shove more people in there. Alright. Sexy clothes? You certainly won't find them in the shops here. I'll let you in on a little secret. The old man of the woods comes a few times a year. He's a total pervert, but the clothes he sells are knockouts. The old man of which woods exactly? Somewhere in the southeast, down past Mount Fragmentum from what I hear. Whoever he is, he said he knew the matriarch and the vestal of water. He was leering when he said it. Well, okay. I guess the matriarch is our final clue then as to who this weird old man is that is a pervert and makes sexy clothes. I wonder who it could be in a place down past a mountain in the woods. Hmm. I, I wonder. Lady matriarch, pardon my asking. But do you know of a perverted old merchant? <laughs> You'll be looking for the Sage of Yuliana then. He didn't even have to finish. How a man of his years manages the trip here from the Yuliana woods on foot, I'll never know. What? There's a path connecting Florum and Yuliana by foot? Done. Let's be off. It's unsettling how eager you are about all this. Still, we don't really have a choice. Sexy clothes, party chat. I'm amazed an old man like the sage still travels town to town by foot. Evidence of the man's tireless commitment to sexy clothes, my dear. I knew from the moment I saw him he was no ordinary grandpa. So, I have no problem with the fact that we wound up out here, but do you really plan to put Anis in something s sexy? I fear I'm ignorant of such things. What precisely makes a garment sexy? Uh, goodness, how to put this? Hold that thoughts! Anis, my dear, why spoil the surprise, hmm? Today's black is pitchless entry number one. 
ring a bell. That really shouldn't come as that much of a surprise. <laughs> anyway, I guess next time we head through the mountain and try and get to Yoyana again. So we can get some sexy clothes for Agnes from the Sage. We know he has plenty, so it really shouldn't be that much of a problem. And he'd certainly be willing to give us them. Uh, see you guys then. But hey, if you enjoyed this video, maybe check out some of the other series I've done. You can also consider subscribing, checking out my Patreon page, or joining my Discord server. There are links in the description to those, as well as other social media links like Twitter and Facebook. Thanks for watching.